Are you running D&D games in Foundry VTT, but you want to take that Foundry game to the next level? Well, this is the video for you because I'm going to go through my top 10 essential Foundry VTT plugins. Hi, my name is Fondu, and on this channel, I cover all things related to D&D and tabletop RPGs, and every day I post a YouTube short with a D&D meme for you, so subscribe if you are interested in that kind of stuff. Before we get started, I need to get some disclaimers out of the way. Firstly, I am using Foundry in version 9, so I can only guarantee that these plugins work with Foundry version 9, as I have not yet done the jump to Foundry version 10 because one of these plugins does not work with Foundry version 10. Secondly, I can only guarantee that these are made for D&D 5th edition, that is the system that I have been playing on Foundry, and I'm guessing most of you also use Foundry for D&D 5th edition, but if you're using other systems, I cannot guarantee that they will work with these plugins. Thirdly, if any of these plugins says, hey, you need to install this other plugin for this plugin to work, you should install that because otherwise it won't work properly. Now then, with those disclaimers out of the way, let's keep it nice and easy and move on forward. So this is my top 10. It's not going to be in any specific order, but these are my 10 favorite Foundry VTT plugins. Starting with number one is Dice So Nice. Now, Dice So Nice is a fantastic plugin that essentially adds 3D dice to your Foundry game. So if you're rolling dice, instead of just having a little chat message pop up, you're going to actually have 3D dice rolling on the screen. It's a really nice touch, they roll really nicely, they have a nice little sound to them. It brings that physicalness of D&D to the table. And what's even cooler is that you can actually customize these dice. You can change the font for the numbers, you can change the styles. There are so many different options available in Dice So Nice to make your dice look super cool and fit just for you. Number two is Tokenizer. Now this is a small but very handy plugin. What this essentially allows you to do is to create a token very, very easily. So if you open up your character sheet and you just click on your character image is going to open up a new window for you. You can even add your character art in that window and then take that added character art and just switch it on over to the other side where you can create a token and then it saves it as an image and when you drag your character onto a battle map, boom, it is now a token instead of a square image. It's a small thing but I've used it a lot in my games and it just makes for a really really handy workflow in my opinion. Number three is Drag Ruler. Now this is a very simple plugin once again but what it essentially does is when you are dragging a token from one point to the other it is going to show you the distance in feet depending on how many squares or hexes you are dragging again it's not a huge thing but it's very handy if your player says I want to move 20 feet or how many feet can I move until I am at the enemy you can just drag and see instead of having to change to another tool etc it's it's really handy it's just a small thing but very handy and on the topic of movement number four is reset movement as the name implies it allows you to reset your movement sometimes you might move around in the battle map and be like oh actually I don't want to go to that spot because I learned some new information or because I had thought of something else. But where was I exactly? Uh, GM, do you remember? Uh, I don't really remember. Don't worry. This adds a simple button that you can click and then it takes you to where all the tokens were at the start of that turn. Very handy. Very nice. Number five is Stairways in parentheses Teleporter. Now, this also is what it sounds like. It allows you to create teleporters within your map. Why is this so handy, you might ask? Well, if you're running one of the pre-built adventures, say Curse of Strahd, like I am, there are many maps in Curse of Strahd that have different levels within the same map. So people might be going from up the stairs onto a different part of the map. If you don't have a teleporter, you're gonna have to drag or delete and then add them and it just, it just creates a really messy workflow. With this, you just create two points and they teleport to each other. And then when a token is next to it and they click it, boom, they teleport to the other end. And this way, you won't have to accidentally expose parts of the maps to your player or just make it messy when you're trying to move between different floors. It's just very handy, very nifty, highly recommend it. Number six is Tidy 5e Sheet. This is an alternate character sheet for your player characters. I specifically like this because the default Foundry character sheet, though it is okay, is a little bit cluttered and a little bit messy and can feel like a little overwhelming. Tidy 5e sheet just makes the sheet tidy and more accessible and just easier to find the information there. Again, a small one, but a very nice touch. At number seven, we have Dynamic Active Effects SRD. So this is a very cool 
plugin for Foundry. It essentially adds a bunch of cool effects for your spells and your features. So for example, if you're casting a firebolt at an enemy, it's gonna play a little animation of a firebolt flying across the screen towards the target. It's just really nice. It creates a lot of atmosphere and theme to your Foundry games, and I really, really like this. There's a bunch of other ones as well uh, in this area of effects that I can go into if you'd like. Comment down below if you'd like me to go more into detail about this effects plugins, because there's a bunch of them. And continuing with this effect theme, at number eight, is FX Master. Now, where Dynamic Active Effects SRD was about, you know, effects for spells and features, etc., FX Master is about effects for rain, weather, time of day, seasons, underwater, etc. You can, like I said, you can add a rain filter to your scene, or fog, or underwater, or autumn, or bats, and this can create a really nice theme to your map. It's a really nice touch adds a lot more feeling and drama to your scene and they're very easy to toggle on and off. At number nine we have GM Screen. This is probably my favorite plugin for Foundry VTT because it adds a digital GM screen. Whoo! Good lord is this an incredibly useful tool. I cannot state enough how useful this tool is for me because not only does it allow you to have a GM screen, you can create tabs and you can create tabs that are shared to players so you can give players a GM screen. Very, very useful. I have made a video on this topic. I will link it over there if you want to see me go deep into what this plugin is and how it works. But there is one big caveat. This plugin does not work with Foundry version 10, unfortunately. I learned this after I made my video and I looked up on it. Thank you for the commenter who commented that on my video. And indeed, the dev has said that it does not work in Foundry version 10 because they made substantial changes to the journal system, which this plugin relies on heavily, and he does not have time to port it over. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. One of the reasons why I have not switched to Foundry version 10. Now, lastly, at number 10, this is another small but useful one for your players. It's called Potato or Not. Yes, potato or not. What this does is, very simply, when the player first time enters your Foundry world, so this is per world always, it's going to ask them what type of machine do they have. A potato? a medium potato or a golden potato. I think those were the categories, I'm not quite sure. But it essentially just asks you, hey, how good is your PC? And depending on what you answer, it's gonna adjust some settings so that Foundry can run better because I have the problem of running a lot of plugins in Foundry and it can make it quite heavy for some of my players who don't have a stellar PC. So this is a good tool to make sure that Foundry runs as good as it can with the PC that your players have because it is individual as, as always. So in conclusion, these were my top 10 essential Foundry VTT plugins. I highly recommend them. Again, these I can only guarantee work in Foundry version nine because I do not use version 10. Uh, so, you know, your mileage may vary. And these are meant for D&D 5e. And remember to install any dependency plugins that they might say you have to install. All right, cool. You got all of that? Uh, great. So I'm gonna put links to all of those plugins down in the description. If you want to install any particular one, you can find the link to the Foundry page down there. And hey, if you enjoyed this video, please do hit that subscribe button and the like button. Those would really help me out and my channel. So I would really, really appreciate that. I also stream every Monday and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern European Standard Time on twitch.tv slash funwithfondue. That is twitch.tv slash funwithfondue. Come on over there if you wanna to talk to me live about D&D &D and tabletop role-playing games, I would love to see you there. And on the screen right now, you're gonna see actually a link to that video that I mentioned about GM screen, where I talk about what GM screen is and how it works. Check it out. If you're interested in having a digital GM screen in Foundry, this video will tell it, will walk you through it. All right then, have a good one, keep it dice and easy, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.